Hello students. In this example, I'm going to solve for you example number two, which is identical to example number one, but if you've made it this far, you've realized, uh, as you notice in the course notes, that we did not actually account for the effect of water at this location. Water has a buoyancy effect, a floating effect. So we're going to resolve example number one, but we're going to take into account the poor water pressure. Just a quick review of what we're looking at. We have a 40 foot deep borehole where the top 10 feet are above the ground water level and that soil has a dry density of 115 pounds per cubic feet. Below the ground water level there's a 30 foot deep part of soil that has a wet saturated density of 125 pounds per cubic feet. In example one we calculated using this formula, the vertical stress formula, what the stress distribution is. Okay, from the surface at zero to the 10 foot interface to the bottom of the 40 foot borehole. If you want a reminder of how this was calculated, check out example number one. Now we're also going to include on this side here what the effect of poor water pressure, that is buoyancy, is on this system. For a reminder of how this formula was computed, please review your lecture notes. 6B for buoyancy. A reminder that the density of water is in imperial units, 62.4 pounds per cubic feet. In metric units, 9.81 kilonewtons per meter cubed. Also in example number one, we went through a quick dimensional analysis to make sure we knew what the units were of density and depth. If you want to review that again, example number one is the place to go. Let's get to it. Okay? So the vertical stress is already done. Let's now go about calculating the stresses caused by water, the so-called poor water pressure. So I'm going to draw another straight line over here. Okay, I've extended my soil division lines for the interfaces, so at zero, the surface, 10 feet, where the two soils change, and 30 feet below, that is 40 feet from the surface, where the whole borehole comes to an end. Okay, this is the pour water pressure. The units are in pounds per square feet. And as you've been shown in the course notes, we use the letter U for it. Okay? Okay. At the surface, there is no water, right? It's not until we get to 10 feet below that we have any water. So at the surface here, we have zero. Okay. We go all the way down to here, the first interface. If we use this formula, the density of water times the depth, the density of water is this, but there is no water above, right? The water only starts at 10 feet and below. So above it, it's nothing. So there is a depth of zero. So I'm going to write down the calculation and then erase it. The calculation of the stress here is U equals to the density of water, 62.4 pounds per cubic feet times a depth of zero. There is no water above this line. So the pore pressure here is zero. We are now then ready to move on to calculate the pore water pressure at the bottom of the borehole. 40 foot depth, 30 feet below this interface. So what we're looking for then is what the pore water pressure is going to be here at the bottom. Let's figure that out. Remember the formula is the pore water pressure is the density of water times the depth of water above it. At this location the pore water pressure is the density of water 62.4 pounds per cubic feet times the amount of water above this location is 30 feet, 30 feet. This gives us a pore water pressure of 
1,872 pounds per square feet. So that's what I'm going to show here. 1,872 pounds per square feet. In the interest of space, I'm not going to erase this because I have more to write at this location. The benefits of the video, though, is that you can pause, rewind, and go back to look at it. Okay, so just with, like we did for vertical pressure, how do we connect the two lines, the two dots? We're going to use a straight line. So we're going to go from 0 to 1,872 with a straight line. Attempt number two. There we go. So here we have the vertical stress. Here we have the pore water pressure. We are now ready to do the calculation for the effective vertical stress. Do you remember what the formula is for effective vertical stress? It is effective vertical stress, which is sigma prime or just sigma is equal to the vertical stress minus the pore water pressure. All right. So now on this side, then, I'm going to draw the final stress distribution based on this calculation. So I'm going to draw another straight line. This is going to be for the effective stress. It, too, is going to be in pounds per square feet. And this one, of all of these, is the easiest one to calculate. Because if you have the vertical stress, and if you have, if you have the pore water pressure, to get the values on this graph, you simply subtract the two. Again, to get the values on this graph, you simply subtract the two. You subtract the vertical stress and the pore water pressure. Let's do it. The first point here, 0 minus 0 equals to 0. Okay, and I'm just going to write it up here. I got it by doing 0 minus 0. 0 minus 0. Okay. At this location here, the vertical stress of 1,150 minus the pore pressure of 0. 1,150 minus 0, we get 1,150. The bottom one, 4,900 for the vertical stress minus 1,872 for the pore pressure gives us 4,900 minus 1,872 gives us 3,028. So that's the number I'm going to put here. 3,028. How do I connect these points? You guessed it. Straight lines. Now, in the interest of neatness and beauty, I'm going to erase these calculations. But because this is a video, you can stop, pause, rewind, and go look at them anytime you want. So there we go. Here we now have the effective stress distribution that accounts for the weight of the soil and the buoyancy of water to give you a final stress distribution as such. So look at this. We got this from example one. Okay, at the bottom we have 4,900 pounds per square feet of stress. Once water gets involved, the stress at the bottom actually goes down. And that's because water is buoyant. It's trying to float that soil. That's why it went down. 